Hey, what's up, Diamonds? It's your boy, Christopher Doc Reed, your favorite relationship and life coach out here. One more again, telling you what your father didn't tell you and your mother didn't know. If you're listening to this and you are an empath, my thing just fell. If you're listening to this and you're an empath um, and you know that as an empath, you feel very deeply, you feel everything and you just got out of a narcissistic relationship, you are free. You are free at last. The chains of narcissistic bondage have been broken, okay? And maybe this is your third time getting out. Maybe this is your fourth time. What, whatever, it doesn't matter. You're free now, okay? And you're released from this emotional prison that you were in. So you should be ecstatic. You should be happy, okay? And the reality is, you hope he does not return because that's the problem, right? They come, they hoover, they reel you back in, and then you start the cycle all over again. And now you get to a point though, because if you've been through this before, you get to a point where you realize, oh, wait a minute, maybe he's never coming back because now the addiction starts to kick in. Your thoughts start to race through your mind. He, he's not coming back. He, he's really done with me. Wait a minute. Did he really love me? Maybe he didn't. He's not checking on me. Now, wait a minute. Pause. We're talking about the narcissist, right? Doesn't matter. Because there is a clear disconnect between your head and your heart. Your head is like, yeah, uh, we free, uh, uh, we free. Your heart, <laughs> how can we have such dissonance going on? You know, or this. You want him to reach out, so guess what? You get the satisfaction of rejecting him. You want to know he's sitting over there, he's losing it, he's crying, he's breaking it, and then he checks on you or he reaches out to you so you can be like, nope, nope, you had it, you lost it. Peace, be gone. But it's cold silent, radio silent. You know what I mean? Now you think, was he really a narc? Maybe he wasn't a narc. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the narc. Maybe I'm the one who pushed him away. That's why he's not trying. It's over. It's over. You're all over the spectrum here. Okay? Once you got out, you were happy. Better days are here. You know what I'm saying? I'm free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. To straight crackhead mode. That's the extreme within, you can go through that within about five, 10 seconds. You know what I mean? And what it does is it triggers your rejection. You're not hearing anything. Okay. Oh, this is what I experienced all my life. I've always been rejected. You know, I've always been told in some way, form or fashion, I'm not good enough. Okay. And so as you're mulling over this now, you think, well, Maybe I need to reach out. Maybe, maybe I just need to check and just see, because I'm really just trying to relieve this pain. This, that's really what it boils down to. Okay. If you are at this place, let me tell you something. You're in the place of the emotional halfway house. Think about a halfway house, the concept of a halfway house. When you get out of prison, they put you in a halfway house. This is the point between your incarceration and your actual total freedom. You being independent. Why do we need this halfway house? Because it helps you to adjust to the freedom that you just received. Now, that probably doesn't make sense. Why do I need help adjusting to freedom? That's what I've always wanted. I wanted to be free. Every day I was in bondage, I wanted to be free. Well, you know what? There are a lot of temptations out here that can cause you to go back into bondage. Scripture calls it the wilderness, the place where you go between the Egypt, bondage, the promised land, freedom. All right. See, listen. See, the struggle in the wilderness is, do I go back or do I go forward, right? You Sometimes you need training wheels out here. You just can't get out here and just go from not knowing how to ride to just fully just getting out here doing willies and all that kind of stuff. 
All right. And the wilderness is that place where you have accountability and provision because God provided in the wilderness. God provided. What did he provide? He provided fire, you know, what I'm saying at night so they could keep the Israelites warm. He provided a cloud during the day, sandals so that their shoes wouldn't wear out the whole nine yards. Right. And so you right now in this place of transition, you need provision. OK, and it's OK to ask for help. Some of you have such a hard time asking for help. There's nothing wrong with that. You can't do this alone. Not this. This is a full blown addiction. Trust. Hear me. A full blown addiction. And let me tell you this. Not any house can be a halfway house. OK, we're not sitting up here using crack houses as halfway houses. You will be back in bondage within a matter of seconds, 100 percent. Trust me. So sometimes your friends, your family, they're not equipped to operate as your halfway house. OK, you're in between point because they're going to do things sometimes to trigger you. Sometimes they are the source of the rejection. Mom, dad, whoever else. Right. They may mean well. Friends may mean well. But sometimes friends are like, just get over it already. Don't take all this. I mean, if your heart's broken, I had a broken heart before. You know what I'm saying? I just did what I had to do and I just cowboyed up and did what I. Mm -mm. It, that, it's not that simple. <laughs> OK, but here's the thing. I don't want you to be embarrassed. I don't want you to be embarrassed by the fact that you need some help with this. OK, scripture says this. We have to bear you one another's burdens. Why put it in there if it's not something that is going to be needed? I have a burden. It's too heavy for me to carry. I need some assistance. We all need this at some point. Can't do it alone. If you need help with this, okay, please reach out to me. Schedule your free 30 minute consultation. Go to my website, ChristopherReed.org. Okay, so we can talk about how to help you get from the promised land. I mean, from Egypt into the promised land to get free for real, for real. You don't want to get stuck in the wilderness. You don't want to get stuck here. You can't live in a halfway house. No, you, no one says, well, you know, I've been at the halfway, I was, 10 years. I think I've been in the halfway. No, it's the half. No, you don't live there. Okay. We want to, so you either go forward or you go backwards. We want you to go forward. So if you need help with this, please reach out. Love to help you. Also, every Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, please join me in my Facebook group. It's a closed group, just women only. OK, where we talk about stuff that really matter to you. Yesterday, what we talked about, queens ask for help from a place of power, not of weakness. Why do we have to talk about this? Because a lot of you have a real difficult time asking for help. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. When you ask from a place of power, OK, this doesn't mean you're weak. All right. Queens have authority. That's what you have. Authority and power. And let me tell you this. When the queen is ready, the king will appear. You don't have to worry about it. But being a queen is a mindset. So if you want to know if you got your queen mindset together, go to the uh, go to my website, ChristopherReed.org. You can see there where to join the Facebook group, The Diamond Mind, and you can listen to the replay. Listen, I got to get out of here. I'm trying to tell you, you can do this. You don't have to get stuck in the wilderness. You don't have to try to live at the halfway house and be afraid that you're going to re-offend. OK, we can get over the rejection. We can get over the pain and we can get into our power. All right. I'm out of here. Peace.